back guys to how to build a go-kart part three of three. So today I'm going to be finishing the go-kart and showing you guys a few test runs of it. Now I'm just basically going to go over how to attach the seat and uh, just kind of some of the stuff that I might have missed in part one and two and just show you how to attach the throttle linkage and the brakes and stuff like that. So uh, let's get talking about this. Alright guys, we're going to start off with the brakes and like I said, when you're building a go-kart it's hard to uh, document the whole thing and kind of give instructions. It's easier just to kind of show you what I'm going to do, do it, and then have it done. So what I did was I set up the brake here. And basically what it is, is I have my throttle cable. And when you buy your brake, it's going to come with like three different parts. You're going to have the main drum. Now this is a six inch drum brake. And I got it off BMIcarts.com. And this is a six inch band for the drum and this is a pin and what it does is it slides in and then you can hook your uh, throttle linkage or your brake cable to it and there's just a little allen wrench and you tighten it down so when it pulls it then the cable stays with it and um, what I did was I put a lag bolt through this piece of wood and it's about a three inch one and what I did was I added a few washers back here for spacing and basically what that does is it helps uh, kind of bring it out so it's not rubbing on the wood it brings the whole band out and then what I did was I took one of these um, uh, hose clamps and I clamped around my uh, exterior the housing for the cable and what that does is it holds the black cable in place so that this can still slide and move without um, this moving because you need this to be secure down if this isn't secure then your brake isn't going to work so now I have that all hooked up so what it does is when this is being pulled it pulls on the brake and it basically clamps around the brake so it locks the wheels locks the whole axle and that is how you use the brakes now when you're doing brakes it's important to make sure that they're fully functioning but um I can honestly say that when you're riding off road, I really don't use brakes that much. Like, once you let off the gas, the car pretty much comes to a stop. It's kind of like when you're riding a boat. A boat doesn't have brakes, it just like automatically stops. That's, that's what I've kind of experienced from this is it's just kind of automatically stopped for my, for, um, just with the friction and everything. So, that's how I set up the brake and, um, it's pretty simple really. It, the hardest part I have to say is connecting the cable so that when this is being pulled, it pulls that. But just remember that this can't move. If the outside black part is moving, then your whole thing isn't going to lock around. What I'm focusing on next is the actual throttle linkage to the engine. Basically on the Harbor Freight engine that I bought, 212 Predators engine, it has the... Um, it already has the throttle linkage there so that you can do that basically um, you just loosen this top screw and what it does is you slide it through and you screw it on once you have the engine in your hands you can really see how easy it is but over here this does the same thing as the brake it locks the cable from moving and then so when it needs to have throttle all it does is pull it towards it and that's what gives it gas so I'm going to try to take another look at this to show you basically when this is pulled this is your gas and there are return springs on here some people like that extra ones on here but as you can see it snaps back snaps back very good and I've never had the issue where it uh, never returned some people kind of like to add them like add one on that spot right here and like drill a small hole here kind of have a spring wrapped around but uh, you, like I can say that with the engine, this is I haven't really had that issue so far. So I mean, you can do it as a safety precaution, but honestly, I haven't had that issue. So when I pull on the throttle cable, then you can see that it moves that, and yes, it does snap back. When you buy an engine, it doesn't actually come with this right here. This is what is called a centrifugal clutch. 
Now you have to order this. These are around 30 bucks usually, or you can get like racing ones and all that, which is basically going to give you like max torque and all that stuff. So um, this one was actually 21 I got it on sale on eBay, and uh, you know, it's a pretty basic idea. Now, basically what it does is it allows the shaft on the engine to spin without the um, without the outside ring actually spinning. Now if you don't have one of these and you just try to like, if you try to like weld a smaller sprocket like this onto here, that's not going to work because when you start it, your, um, your cart's going to be moving immediately. So I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the engine and uh, you, you'll see that this bolt will probably be spinning but this piece won't be moving. Then when you give it gas it allows the thing to move. So I'm going to start up the engine. Notice how that bolt is spinning but the outside of this isn't, alright? So when I give it gas, it's going to allow this to engage and spin the whole car going forward. So I'm going to give it some gas. So the clutch engages once it reaches a certain RPM and that will expand the inside making the whole thing move which spins the uh, sprocket and everything. Now this is a 6 to 1 ratio but in my plans I did a 6 to 1 ratio. What I have is a 72 tooth sprocket. As you can see it doesn't have much clearance with the ground so I set you guys up in the plans with a 60 tooth sprocket, a 10 tooth clutch and a number 40 or 41 chain. This is a 35 chain and I want to say racing go-karts use a 35 chain and um, the chain and all that this is kinda like from eBay this is from go-kart galaxy and it was like 25 bucks so I thought that was a pretty good deal I think it was on sale I want to say but uh, the clutch has two set screws in it and that just attaches to the shaft and um, inside it also has a keyway just like the axle and the key is actually built into the clutch so that it can stay connected and engage so um, I hope I explained that well enough for you guys but I'm trying to show you guys like the whole assembly and everything that I did yet again it's very hard to uh, build a go-kart and make a video so I kinda had to build it then show you guys what I did but um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or something like that. Now one thing I can't stress enough is using Loctite on almost all your bolts and everything because when you're riding you don't want any bolts to vibrate loose, especially on the clutch. You want to have Loctite with the bolt that goes into the shaft, otherwise you could have the possibility of your clutch kind of sliding off and um, if your clutch slides off, chances are you're going pretty fast and it's going to hit the ground and break. So uh, just use some Loctite to save you some money and also add safety. You want to add Loctite to all the locking collars and all the set screws on them and everything. Just anything that has a screw pretty much, add Loctite to it. So um, make sure that all your bearings and everything are properly oiled and everything. And I think in the plans I called for a smaller bolt on here just because this one is so long but I used bolts and everything to make sure everything was secure. And as for the seat, basically I went to Walmart and I picked up a fishing boat seat. This was $38 and on the bottom it just has four bolts that I attached it to. I can't really, I'm um, trying to give you the best view here. There's four bolts under here, believe it or not, and uh, it all attaches in the center. So what I did was I made a template of the bolt, and then I bolted it on where I wanted it. And this seat is a really good deal. Don't waste your money on a go-kart seat. 38 bucks for this thing. Tons of padding. 
very comfortable. It's um, it's probably like, I think it's, I don't think it's real leather. It's probably like pleather or something like that. I don't know. It's some material that uh, is water resistant. The good thing about this is it can fold down if you need to. Like say you have a car and uh, this could possibly make the difference between being able to fit it into a smaller car or something like that. If you have a truck it doesn't really matter but it's just kind of convenient like this is a really nice seat and I'm really happy with uh, the deal I got on it. kind of thought of that idea myself. I thought it would be really comfortable. Now we're going to talk about hooking up the throttle and the brake cables to something that's actually going to allow it to give you gas and whatnot. What you can do is get one of these things. This is a uh, just bike or dirt bike kind of handlebar set and what it does is basically you can mount it on here and then mount a uh, twist throttle and brake and add some grips and just mount this piece on here so it can uh, run the cables into it and hook it up but if you look at a bike cable like over here see how the cable just goes right in and then underneath it slides right in so that's all that is I don't actually have the parts but I'm going to basically take two of these and then what I'm going to do is attach them onto here and then I'm going to attach this directly to the wood using some type of bracket thing so that will, that will double as handlebars and gas and brake now, basically if you're going to build a go-kart you need a little bit of knowledge on this and I hope that I've given you guys enough knowledge on it um, the one thing I do want to say is if you are going to plan to ride this on pavement a lot, I would highly recommend doing a dead axle or a differential. Now, what a differential does is it allows the inside tire or it allows the tires to spin at the same time, but when you're taking a turn, it allows it to uh, rotate faster or slower at different speeds. And in that case, it's connected right to the sprocket and the brakes are connected right onto the center part. But um, that's a little bit too complicated for what I want to talk about right here. Now a dead axle is just basically the sprocket is attached directly to the wheel along with the brake is attached directly to the wheel. So you have a drive wheel and this wheel is just kind of like loose like on a bearing just like the front wheels. And um, I'm going to show you something. If you have a live axle on pavement, the inside wheel when you're spinning needs to spin faster and if it doesn't do that, then it's going to slip and um, it's not going um, to be able to spin faster. So you're going to burn through rubber a lot quicker. And as you can see here, this rubber is almost being burnt out. And I haven't even, like, I've rode it for a few hours. On this side, it's a little better because I must take more left turns than I do right. But as you can see on the front, like, wow, these wheels still look brand new. But, um... Yeah, I hope I gave you guys all the information you could have, and I'm going to give you a, a test drive. Don't forget about the free plans in the description, and I really, I hope you guys build one of these. They're a lot of fun. Now, the overall price of this was about five or 600 bucks, and you can really, really cut that down by getting wheels off a tractor or something like that. If you can get used wheels or something, wheels costing me 200 bucks. If you can get used wheels, you will save yourself a ton. If you can get yourself a used engine, you will probably save yourself a ton too. But this engine was actually a really good deal. 120 bucks for a brand new 6.5 horsepower engine. This go-kart tops out at about 20 miles per hour. But if you do change the gear ratio, then I can have more RPMs, which allows it to... Um, it allows it to uh, make the wheels spin faster, but I will lose a lot of torque. Now, 6-1 gear ratio is a really good gear ratio if you're going to go off-roading and stuff like that. And even on-road, it's just it's got a lot of torque to it. So I, I really hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Share it and everything. Like I've put a lot of work into this, and I hope that I've explained everything to you. And um, I'm going to give it a test right now to show you guys how well this actually runs. One thing I forgot to say is always make sure you're wearing a helmet. And um, also on a live axle, live axles are really good for off-road. But on-road, they're not the most ideal choice. So if this is a really good cart for going off-road, because it allows the inside wheel to slip when it's turning. 
without uh, wearing out the traction, but let's give it a test drive. So I hope you guys like it. I highly encourage you to build your own and have some fun this summer. So uh, enjoy the rest of summer and I will see you guys next Tuesday for more woodworking videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment for any questions. And uh, that's it guys, I'll see you guys next Tuesday for another woodworking project.